Whether you're setting it up for yourself or setting it up for your guild, the guild island is a great and lucrative way to make extra income as well as create a hub for your guild members. In this video, we'll be going over the different ways to set up the guild island as well as I will walk you through how to set up the guild hall and all of the laborers inside. Now my guild island is based out of Fort Sterling. So in Fort Sterling, this is the map that you see when you press N or you open up the map on mobile. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the island merchant. You're going to look for this symbol on the map. So once you talk to the island merchant, you're going to have the personal island tab and you're going to have the guild island tab. The guild island tab is where you purchase your guild island. I already have a four out of six island, so I need to upgrade again for this. But I'm going to put a chart up on the screen right now that shows you the cost for upgrading your guild island. So we have 137.5k for the first initial buy of the island. And then we have 250k, 700k, and so on and so forth. It just keeps upgrading to put more building plots down. The significant one is the tier two. You get the small building plots so you can put down the smelter and the butcher without having to take up spaces for larger buildings. You could always put those down on a larger building plot, but it's better to put them down on a small one so you can use the bigger plots for houses and different refining buildings. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to go over to the travel planner. So you're gonna find this little symbol on the map. It's like a little compass. You're gonna go over there. Look at all these mammoths. We're going to click on the banner and we're going to go to Demonic Astronauts Island, which is my guild island. Now, it'll be the name of your guild and it'll say the island. After your initial purchase, it'll take two minutes to set up. But once it is done, you can travel to your island. We're going to buy a journey. Now, this is the guild island. Yours is going to look different if you initially just bought it. This is a four out of six island. I'm going to press N or you can open up your map on mobile. I have it in construction mode right now for the purpose of this video. We are putting down houses for laborers, but we are keeping down the stonemason and saddler. The reason that I'm keeping the stonemason, the saddler, a smelter, and I'm going to be putting down a butcher is because when you go to the city, for this one, the stonemason, it has a usage fee, as you can see, the 7,000 and 5,000. And then the other one has an even higher usage fee. You know, this one is high as well. They're all pretty high. So the resource return rate on some of these buildings aren't worth it. So that's why we want to keep it on the guild island because it's better to refine without the resource return rate. And I'll talk about resource return rate in another video, but all you have to know is the guild island doesn't give resource return rate. You can supplement it though by making these buildings on the guild island because they won't even have an, a fee for your guild to use. So they're saving money instead of paying that refining fee at the ones in the city. But some of them in the city are cheaper, like 500 to use the lumber mill. That's not a problem at all. You can use that and you won't have to worry about using the one in the island and keeping food on your buildings to... You know, to, to feed, you have to feed your workers. But the main purpose is we're going to help you set up the guild hall. So we're going to press H, or if you are on mobile and you want to figure out how to build, you press your player menu up here, your little icon, and then you press build, and it'll open up the menu. And if you want to see the resources that are needed, you can see them in my tab right here. We have 900 of each block that is needed. A total, we're going to need, uh, we're going to need 2,400 rough logs, and we're going to need 225 rough stone to get the guild hall up to tier 5. And we want to get to tier 5 so we have access to 15 laborers, because after that, it just stays at 15 laborers. Every tier up after that just has to do with the type of tier furniture you can put in. So we're going to select guild hall from the build menu. It's going to be the bottom one with the house. It's going to tell us what we need to build it. We're going to build and we are going to slap it down for 100 silver. All right, now that it's down, we get this little construction plot and you're going to click on the construction plot and you're going to fill in the different resources that you need. And boom, there is the novice skilled house. It's not showing up on the map because it takes forever. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it all the way to tier five because right now you can see that we only have access to seven laborers and it's not very expensive. 98,000 for this, 86,000 for this much travertine and a 300K for the granite block. It's not bad at all. It's definitely worth getting all of this purchased. We're going to go to the renovation. So you're going to see this little, this board on the building. Click on it, you're going to go into renovation and you're going to press upgrade. It's going to show us what we need. We're going to press begin and we're going to press these little plus signs to fill them all in. And we're going to do that for every upgrade in the building. Here it is again. Renovate, upgrade, begin. We're going to press each one, get it completely upgraded because we want to get it all the way to tier five. All right, here's the board again. We're going to upgrade, begin. And we're going to dump the rest of our resources in here to get this done. 
All right, there we go. Now we have a tier five guild hall. So now that we have the guild hall all set up, if you go back to the board, you can see what we have access to. So we have access to 15 laborers. We have residents if you want to make this your home. I wouldn't worry about that one, but we have furniture as well. And the thing about the furniture is that has to do with the trophies you put down, the beds, and the tables for your laborers. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the laborers inside the guild house. What you're going to do is you're going to go to this board and you're going to scroll down to hire laborers. These are all of the laborers that you can hire. For this video, we're going to be doing the prospector. We're going to press hire and we're going to press place and it gives us a little option to place it in the guild hall. Now I'm going to place all 15 of these and I will fast forward and we will be back to show you the rest. All right, all of the prospectors are placed. We hired out 15 total prospectors. There is a reason I chose only one type of laborer. You may be tempted to choose every single different type of laborer and putting them down in here. But as you'll see here in a moment when we place the furniture, you want to keep one type of labor in your guild house because the laborers will become unhappy when there's other laborers in there and placing down different types of trophies because you have to do it for the other laborers, but they become unhappy when there's other laborers down. So right now you can see that their happiness is zero across the board. And right here in the tab, you can see all of the trophies that I have and the table and beds that I need to cover their happiness. So they have zero out of 100 for the beds, zero out of 100 for the tables, and zero out of 100 for the trophies. The guild hall is tier five. We can only put down, I'm gonna resort this. We can only put down uh, up to tier five trophies this is where the 70 space for furniture comes in on the building when we start placing all of these building items so what we're going to do is we're going to place all of the beds first so we'll place one and we'll see what happens to their happiness six out of six out of 100 every single one six out of 100 because at this moment they're all having to share a bed so that's lame so let's put 15 of them down Okay, all the beds are down, and I know it looks like a complete just cluster up there. It doesn't look good at all, and you can organize it in any way possible for the purpose of this video. I'm kind of just throwing them down to show you. But now they have 100 out of 100 happiness because each laborer needs their own bed. When they level up, so when you send them out to do work, they're going to start leveling up to the next tier. These beds are only tier 2. You need to keep the tiers of the bed up with the tier of the laborers that you're using. Once they get to tier five, you have to have tier five beds. But then once you get your laborers up to tier six, that's when you need to get the guild hall upgraded again to tier six so that you can start putting down tier six furniture. The next item you're gonna need is the table. And the only one you can use right now is the journeyman table. And for this, you're gonna need four, four tables. We'll check the happiness of the laborers and see how it affected them. So we have 40 out of 100 with one table down. Now we're going to have 80 out of 100. And we're going to put the third table down and they will be 100 out of 100. But we're going to throw the fourth table down for now because these laborers are going to get to level three very quickly. And when they're level three, these tables, because there's no tier two tables that you can use for your laborers, these tier three tables will cover them while they're tier three. But right now they're 100 out of 100. So we have 200 out of 300 happiness. And now we have to worry about the trophies. So in here we have three, six, nine, 12, 15. So we need to do five of each trophy as opposed to one of each trophy because in personal houses you can have three laborers. You need one of each trophy. Now you need five of each trophy because we have 15 of them. That's the only way to get them to max happiness because they're in the same building. They're all affected by the same trophies. So let's put down the tier two trophies first and we'll see how it affects their happiness. The tier two general trophy gives them one out of 100 and we put down the tier three. Now they're two out of 100. Now watch when we put down another one of the tier two. I know they look the same. They're very similar, but we're putting down two tier two and we have one tier three trophy down. Now they're three out of 100. So we can keep placing these down until we get them to their max happiness as the same goes for their personal trophies. So we're going to need a special type of trophy for them or the prospector. It's going to be the, uh, the ore, the ore trophies. Again, I put one down and now their happiness is at five. So this one affected it by two. Put another one down. Pushes it up to seven. You can see how the pattern is going here. 
So we're going to place all of these trophies down and you'll see what their happiness is at. Okay, all the trophies are set up. Looks very tacky, all shoved in this corner like this. But now when we look at the workers, they're 60 out of 100. So happiness is looking great. We can't get them to 100 unless they're tier eight, but over time we can get their happiness up by setting it up like this. This is the max happiness. You're going to be able to get them at a tier five house. If you would have switched them up to different laborers, you have to put down different trophies. And the issue with putting down different trophies is we're not going to have enough room to put down other trophies. 59 out of 70. You know, we have, we have room to put down 10 more trophies, but we're not going to be able to get the full return because the laborers are going to start getting unhappy when there's other laborers put down in the guild house. So this is how you want to set it up. You could do prospectors. You could do any type of laborers. You could do fishermen. You could do... Uh, you can do lumberjacks, stone cutter, proper. You can do anything you want. Mercenaries, if you wanted. I don't suggest mercenaries. Going over these uh, laborers is once you place them down, you need to go into access rights. And in access rights, it says private. You need to switch it to guild if you want your guild members to use it. Or if you want to set it to a specific person. Uh, you can do a custom and you can put their name on there. So right now we have everyone. Elements placed have no access unless they're included in elements with higher access rights. So uncategorized. We can slap this up here to like a user. Uh, we can have the guild be using it or everyone be using it. Or we can actually type in somebody's name. Like if I want... If I want Tripod to be using it, which is one of the guild members, he has access to this laborer now and only he has access. He's the only one that can give it books and get rewards from it. I usually set them all to guild. Just because a lot of the guild members like to use them, but you can set them up in any way. That's how you get the whole guild hall set up, and that's how you start leveling them up. You can also buy laborers of a higher tier, as well as the higher tier furniture, if you want to get started at a higher level. If you don't want to start leveling up base uh, tier 2 laborers. But that's how you set up the guild hall on the guild island. Just going to give you a rundown on the other buildings. And I'm not going to do every single one. I'm just going to kind of go over a little bit of the buildings I have set up. So I have a novice house set up here. The house is a personal island video that I posted. The house setup on the guild island is exactly the same. So if you want to go check out the personal island setup video, and that's how you will set up every single personal house on this island. And then as well as the... Uh, you can't you can't do any farming on this island, but you can have Warrior's Forge, Mage Tower, Hunter's Lodge. Uh, you'd press them... You would build it the same way as you build anything else. So we can go put it down over here. I'm not going to actually be building them. Or actually putting the resources in. But if I wanted to, I could place this bad boy right here. And I have a novice hunter's lodge ready to upgrade. And we can use that. The guild has access to using all of that. And we can have the different types of refinery buildings. And again... The best way to do it is to check the Fort Sterling map, check what the prices are, uh, the fees that you have to pay for a lot of these buildings, because a lot of your guild members are going to be getting ripped off. Uh, it's different in every town. Some towns don't have overly priced stonemasons. Some towns do, like our town does. So that's why having a stonemason on our island is actually more beneficial, because people aren't paying out the yin-yang, all of their silver, just to upgrade uh, all of their stuff they've gathered into block. Uh, you have a training area over here, but you, know, you don't really use it too often. Uh, you can check different DPS numbers and stuff like that. But you also have your own uh, marketplace that is guild internal. So only guild members can see what is sold and bought on this market. As well as you have your own personal bank in the middle of the island that you only you have access to. It acts as a bank the same as would in your regular town. That's going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy or learn something, make sure to leave a like subscribe and maybe even leave a comment that is all for today i will see you guys in the next video enjoy your albion online journey